Hey there folks, my name is Mr. Moomin11, and yesterday we got the roadmap for the launch of Cold War Season 3. And if Activision is able to deliver on what they're promising, there are some big changes coming to get excited about that I'll walk you through here in this video. So let's jump right in and look through the blog post's most important updates relating to what we can expect in-game, starting with when this update will be available for download, and of course, how many games you'll have to delete off your old console to make room for the new files. Starting at 9pm tomorrow night, which is Wednesday, April 21st, expect to be able to start your Warzone download and not be able to play again until the next day, because we got some hefty file size requirements ready to eat up your storage and slow down your internet speeds. If you are wanting to hop into Warzone right away, you can expect a download size of about 26GB across the board for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, which is a decently big update that will take even the fastest internet speeds a little while to finish, so make sure you've got a reminder set to get that started first thing tomorrow night. If you're only interested in hopping into some regular Cold War multiplayer though, that update is about half the size of the Warzone one, ranging anywhere from 8 to 13 gigabytes depending on your system, and it goes live tonight in a few hours at 9pm. So now that we know when these are going live, what all can we expect to get with the Season 3 update? Taking it all in, it looks like there's more content available right away compared to the lackluster Season 2 launch we had a month or two ago. The Cold War and Warzone integration that happened at the beginning of the season was big in itself, but in terms of overall changes, there weren't many positive intended ones we got at the Season 2 launch. Instead, it seemed like a lot of stuff that had been working got broken, as new bugs were introduced and old exploits like the stem glitch took up developers' focus. But throughout Season 2's damage control process, we've been getting a few hotfixes, weapon balancing patches, and many updates trickling through the pipeline. So with Season 3, they're actually able to focus on delivering new stuff to the throngs of dopamine-starved players desperate to consume the latest and greatest distractions we can get to escape from this increasingly dystopian, pandemic-ridden hellscape we call existence. And on that cheery note, let's start with the Warzone changes coming since that's one of the biggest updates players are expecting. Taking a look at the roadmap and the blog post in conjunction, this is actually the one area that has the least amount of information available on what's going to be included in the title update tomorrow. The blog post here talks about the lore of Warzone and what's been going on in the last month or so with the arrival of the cargo ship next to prison, but I won't sit here and read it to you. So feel free to pause it and impersonate your best sexy Moo Man voice in your head. We all know that Cargo Ship brought zombies to Warzone, and from there they've been doing the graveyard smash across Verdansk, spreading from the ship to prison, then to hospital, TV station, downtown, superstore, and dam. The current state of Warzone has got those contamination zones, spreading in the same order as the zombie crawl from the shipwreck, turning people into zombies if they die there just like we had last October with the haunting of Verdansk limited time game mode. It's something novel, a little bit different to keep things spicy in anticipation leading up to the Season 3 launch tomorrow, but the real changes will come after the update is live. Here, we still have to speculate about what'll happen since there's nothing explicitly divulged in the roadmap, but the leaks and rumors have stated that as a whole, Verdance is going to be staying strikingly similar in terms of map design and overall layout. We'll all just be magically transported back in time to the same map, just reskinned to the 1980s with a few small changes here and there, like the dam being replaced with a bridge. Now this was a bit of a letdown for some of the player base who were expecting a brand new Warzone experience on a completely different map, like the previously leaked Ural Mountains map, but that seems to have been scrapped or at least put on hold for the time being. Regardless, these next few days should bring some excitement, as there will certainly be easter eggs to explore along with the Hunt for Adler event. Now, like I mentioned, I'm personally not too into the whole lore side of things, I honestly don't even know who Adler is, but it looks like if you complete the event, you'll get an Adler skin, which, since we don't know who he is or what he looks like, we'll slap this artist rendering up on screen to get us excited for what the new skin could possibly look like. No guarantees, though. Speaking of skins, since we all love cosmetics here, there will be more operator bundles to waste, ah, sorry, I mean spend your money on, including Social Justice Warrior Bane, a Team King Kong enthusiast, and Dr. Anthony Fauci persuading you to get your vaccine. We'll also get another Captain Price skin, because that horse wasn't beaten to death enough yet as it is. But with those out of the way, there are new weapons dropping with the Battle Pass. At level 15, you'll unlock access to the PPSH, which you'll recognize if you played some of the previous World War II Call of Duties as the Super Fast Fire Rate SMG. There will also be a new sniper rifle with a fast ADS speed introduced for those of you who enjoy 360 quickly trick zooming off the tower in Rust. Looks a lot like the car we've got now, so I guess there will just be a little more variety in that department. And right off the bat with the launch of Season 3, you'll also have access to the Ballistic Knife, which will probably be fun to troll around with for a few games, but I don't know that it'll see a lot of action in Warzone. And not right off the bat, so later on in the season, we'll also have access to a bat. So, cool I guess. Okay, but realistically speaking, if I'm this Tier 1 operator dropping into unknown hostile territory and I see my squad mate loading up a baseball bat as his weapon of choice, I will respectfully turn in my papers and be dishonorably discharged before trusting him with my life. But moving on, there's also yet another burst rifle coming down the line mid-season to join the broken AUG and M16, so we've got that to look forward to, along with another full auto pistol since the last ones introduced were such perfectly balanced weapons. And that covers everything we know so far for Season 3 offerings affecting Warzone. 
There will be some more information coming to us midday tomorrow when the new event launches before the 9 p.m. download time. So make sure you're subscribed here to get the hottest takes delivered to your ear holes in a dry, sarcastic manner. But for now, let's finish up the roadmap by going over the Cold War multiplayer updates we can expect to see later today. We'll be getting two new 6v6 multiplayer maps right from the get-go, which is a refreshing addition compared to the Season 2 launch. The first is the new snowy map called Yamantau that gives me vibes from Black Ops Summit map. Second, we've got what's probably a really small Nuketown style map called Diesel. This one will be used for both 6v6 multiplayer as well as the 2v2 and 3v3 gunfight modes. Later on in the season, there's cause for celebration because the fan favorite map Standoff will be making its triumphant return. It looks like a 1-1 -one -one reskin like they did with Raid, and if that's the case, I think some players who have left Cold War may come back to play at least a few games on Standoff for old time's sake. The last map being released during the midseason, called Duga, will be most likely for the Fireteam game mode. This map is based off the real-life Russian Early Missile Detection Radar Array built in the late Cold War, and I would honestly recommend watching a video on or a reading about the Duga radar system. It's a pretty cool thing to nerd out over. It looks like they'll also be porting this map over to the Zombies Outbreak mode to grow the number of zones to explore in that game mode at the same time they expand Fireteam. And speaking of zombies, looks like there will be a new field upgrade in Intel, and Fireteam will get two new vehicles. One other Fireteam thing that's just kind of glossed over is the new multiplayer mode coming mid-season to Cold War. From what we know about the multi-team elimination mode, it sounds like a mini battle royale, with limited respawns and a growing radiation zone, it's just on the Cold War engine. It'll be interesting to see if this cannibalizes any of the player base away from Warzone, what with them being such similar modes, but we'll have to see what exactly the new mode entails. The other multiplayer mode being released is the old party game Sticks and Stones, so for the casual players who don't want to deal with SBMM, hopefully this will be a nice mode to hop back into and just mindlessly have fun in. Lastly is the new score streak, the Strafe Run, which seems like it'll be like the Napalm Strike, just different in some way, so we'll have to see if that's a viable score streak to use after the update. And with that folks, it looks like we just about covered everything worth mentioning in the patch notes. Of course, everyone's levels will be reset, but we're used to that by now. So tell me what you all think of the Season 3 roadmap. Are you excited for the update? Let me know what you're most looking forward to down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and show the algorithm some love. You should also consider subscribing here to the Moo Crew for more Call of Duty updates and guides. You can also join our live streams over at twitch.tv forward slash MrMooMan11 to get a behind the scenes look at Moo Man in his natural habitat, which is definitely a sprawling green pasture and not some tiny factory lot. And if you feel like supporting my work directly, consider becoming my first patron over at patreon.com forward slash the Moo Crew with a K. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.